That's the sound of autopilot activation. And for the next hour and 19 minutes, my car will be doing the driving for me on the Blue Ridge Parkway in North Carolina, notorious for its twists and curves in the fog. If you're not familiar with Tesla's autopilot, anytime the animated lane lines are blue and you see the blue dot with the white steering wheel, the car is doing the driving. My hand is just along for the ride, providing just enough torque on the steering wheel so autopilot knows it's there. It also allows me to keep the wheel from turning any direction I don't want it to, as any resistance on the steering wheel will cause autopilot to disengage. The first thing you might notice is that my set speed is lower than the speed limit. Autopilot does not know to slow down for fog. It just wigs out when visibility drops and makes you take over. However, I found that this is speed based just like it should be. If I manually adjust the maximum set speed to what I would be doing if I were the one doing the driving, then autopilot stays engaged. And as you'll see, it does as well as a human driver in the same conditions. On that note, I am still technically the driver, fully responsible for everything that my Tesla does while on autopilot. I always keep at least one hand on the wheel when autopilot is engaged, not just on the Blue Ridge Parkway. And and I have my GoPro angle purposely to show that. This video is just some of the highlights of what Autopilot had to handle on this drive. I had originally planned to fast forward between highlights like you're seeing here, but as you're probably already realizing, the windshield wipers make the clips unwatchable. That's why I uploaded the entire 79 minutes in a separate video that is completely unedited for the doubters as well as those who find driving videos relaxing. You can find it tagged above or linked in the video description below. This is a non performance dual motor model 3 built in august of 2018 i did spring for the acceleration boost that brings its 0 to 60 time to only 3.6 seconds i also just received my upgrade to the latest autopilot computer but the most significant upgrade came with the most recent software update that every tesla got for free software 2020.16.2.1 reintroduced slowing for sharp curves and it is the only reason my tesla was able to handle the blue ridge Parkway. I say reintroduce because Autopilot did slow for sharp curves for a few revisions in the fall of 2019, but it was not smooth at all and was actually more dangerous in some cases than if Autopilot simply maintained speeds. That's why Tesla walked that feature back until they got it right. For this drive, they definitely got it right. Back to the fog. The visibility you're seeing through my GoPro is actually a lot better than what I was seeing with my eyes. This is a well-known phenomenon. The lenses of many optics reduce the backscatter of fog, so you're actually able to see farther out than I was able to see. That's why it might seem strange that I flicked the right thumb wheel to slow autopilot set speed, but you'll sometimes see cars passing in the other direction that are going about the same speed as I am. It turns out that autopilot's cameras must see the road a lot more like human eyes and a lot less like the GoPro because it simply wouldn't work at speeds faster than what a conservative driver like myself would choose to do. It also must be at the speed it needs to be before you hit thicker areas of fog. I'm really paying attention to what the visibility is way out in front of me so I can get autopilot to slow down before it overruns its desired visibility. I am not suggesting that letting autopilot drive is a more relaxing way to experience the Blue Ridge Parkway in the fog than driving yourself. It definitely is not, but I'm willing to work as a co-pilot to see what this latest version of autopilot software can do. The only failure that I could not correct was bad speed limit data in the navigation map. Here, the speed limit returns to 45 miles per hour, but autopilot won't allow me to go above the 35 miles per hour it thinks is the speed limit. It's not that big of a deal today because of the fog, but it would have caused traffic issues on a clear day for sure. The only other weakness of autopilot I had to contend with was the fact that it will drive right through potholes. I'm running the 18 inch aero wheels which have the most pothole protection of any Model 3 wheel, but driving through these potholes made me tense up more than driving on the viaducts.
This section of the Blue Ridge Parkway is famous for its viaducts, which is basically a fancy word for the curved bridges that hug the side of mountains. Sometimes the road is just built into the mountain, like this curve where autopilot slows to expertly navigate. Usually the views from these overhangs are amazing, but we see fog instead, which might actually make some of these curves less scary than seeing the openness beyond the short guardrails. One of the most famous viaducts in the entire world is that over Lynn Cove on Grandfather Mountain. If you've seen a photo of the Blue Ridge Parkway, it was probably of this viaduct. It defines the parkway in North Carolina, though many see this 379 meter long span as the penultimate driving experience of the parkway's three state run. The Lynn Cove viaduct took four years to build, but the road connecting it to the rest of the parkway wasn't inaugurated until four years later in 1987. As you can imagine, letting autopilot drive this involved quite a lot of pucker factor but it did great. It slowed where it needed to even though I had already dropped its maximum speed due to the intense fog. The curves and viaducts weren't the only hazards Autopilot had to contend with. This flatbed wrecker was backing into my lane, but Autopilot saw it in plenty of time to slow down and come to a complete stop if it needed to. However, the driver pulled off the road before that was necessary. From there, Autopilot was back to navigating numerous tight curves, some requiring it to slow down to 21 miles per hour. The latest software update made an interesting change that many had been asking for, and now hugs the side of the lane on right-hand turns just like a human driver should do. This new feature ended up being Autopilot's downfall on this drive, and the closeness to actually driving off the pavement here is its foreshadowing. As with all new behaviors, this one will get some tweaking, hopefully sooner rather than later. Fog kept most people off the parkway this day, but this camping van started its drive home right in front of me. Autopilot adjusted speed as it has done well for years. I do wish I could set the follow distance for even farther than this. It's certainly a safe distance, but it still seems close enough to look like I'm pressuring the driver in front of me to go faster. Eventually, the van pulled off the parkway, which Autopilot once again navigated as I've come to rely on.
I eventually came up on another famous parkway landmark, the Little Switzerland Tunnel. This is one of 26 tunnels along the length of the parkway, but it's the first you come across in North Carolina traveling from the north. It's 76 meters long and quite dark at its midpoint, but autopilot once again drove as well as I would from end to end. Tunnels appear every handful of miles from here, but alas, autopilot ran into trouble before making it to the next one. Remember how I said that hugging the inside of right-hand curves was going to be autopilot's undoing? Well, after letting it kiss the grass over and over with the sidewalls, I had to take over as soon as I felt tread leave the pavement. I didn't know what was in that grass, nor did I know how far autopilot was going to go off-roading before correcting itself. I took over with no drama other than the excitement from realizing that my Tesla Model 3 just drove itself for nearly an hour and 20 minutes of sharp curves, exposed viaducts, a tunnel, and lots of fog. Every inch was driven using the level of autopilot that comes standard on all new Teslas. As good as this was, it will keep getting better and better, and every Tesla will get those improvements for free. I love the fact that our car is electric for a thousand reasons that have nothing to do with the environment, but I'd happily buy a gas-powered sedan if it had the tech and constant free upgrades found in this car. However, nobody but Tesla comes close to this, which is why we can't wait to get another one so my wife and I don't fight over who gets to drive our Model 3. If you're looking to get a Tesla for yourself, be sure to use my Tesla owner's referral link to get free supercharging. Full details about the Tesla owner's referral program can be found at the link itself. Be sure to subscribe for more autopilot torture test videos. I really appreciate you watching the Tech Tech, and I hope to see you next time.